You're watching over and over and over again the Positive Arsenal Channel. Hello, my name is Richard and welcome back to my channel over and over and over again, which features everything to do with Arsenal. Now in this video, I just want to look back on this Premier League weekend. It's weekend eight, of course. Just before I do that, I just want to make sure that you are subscribing to my channel. If you like what I do, please hit the subscribe button down in the corner there. And um, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up as well. And if you've got any comments at all to make about this weekend's Premier League action or anything else to do with the current situation in football or Arsenal, please drop me in the comments box below as I do love to hear from you guys as well. So, of course, only one place to start at the Etihad, of course. Uh, Manchester City against Liverpool, the top two sides from the last two seasons. Many expect them to be the top two again. Uh, Man City have had a bit of a poor start, dropped a lot of points in, in drawn games. So, they really needed to win this game. They went behind early on with a penalty from Mo Salah, yet another penalty for Liverpool. Now, there's a surprise. But Man City did get themselves level before half-time. Gabriel Jesus, first goal since his return from injury. Man City then had a chance to take the lead, actually. They got a penalty of their own, a very harsh handball decision by VAR um, against Joe Gomez. But Kevin De Bruyne uh, put his penalty wide at a post, which was quite unusual for him. But that wasn't the worst penalty of the weekend, as we will come on to later. Anyway, in the end, that proved to be a crucial miss for City as the game finished in a 1-1 draw. And um, Liverpool, who had started the weekend top of the league, um, dropped down to third. With the truncated kickoff times at the moment, um, lots of different teams are going to the top of the league for a couple of hours at a time. Southampton had their opportunity on Friday night when they faced Newcastle at St Mary's. Uh, they won 2-0 to go to the top of the league. In fact, the first time they've ever led the Premier League and the first time they've been top in English football for over 30 years. The goals were by Shea Adams and Stuart Armstrong, one in each half. Um, but Theo Walcott played a big part in this win, actually. He had a great game for Southampton. He was at the heart of everything good that they did. Um, and it's now five games unbeaten. No, six games unbeaten, isn't it, in the Premier League for Southampton? Five wins and a draw. Fantastic form they're in at the moment. And they did, I say briefly, lead the table. Of course, we don't want to mention this too much, but on Sunday lunchtime, Tottenham did go to the top of the table. They were the next team to head the way um, via this very close victory at West Bromwich Albion by one goal to nil. Um, it was a very tight game, actually. West Brom played well, but Tottenham got the goal two minutes from time. It was a header from Harry Kane, um, which gave Tottenham the three points. And as I say, it did briefly take him to the top of the league, but typical Tottenham, they was never going to stay there very long, was they? <laughs> So in the end, it was Leicester, of course, that took over at the top via a 1-0 victory at home to Wolves. They're in great form as well, aren't they? Showing that you can play in the Europa League on a Thursday. It doesn't have to affect your Premier League results after that. And this game was a game of two penalties, actually, both to Leicester. They've had eight penalties now this season already. Arsenal have only had one. Just let that sink in for a moment. Vardy scored the first one um, and he missed his second one. It was saved by Rui Patricio in the Wolves goal. Good for my fantasy team as he's my goalkeeper, but it didn't really help, help Wolves in the end um, as Leicester um, won the game by a goal to nil, I say, to jump back to the top of the league. There is talk in the East Midlands, of course, of them going on and repeating what they did in 2016. Seems early days yet, um, but you certainly, um, you certainly never know. Chelsea are another team in really good form at the moment. Um, they're up to fifth place, scoring a lot of goals, aren't they? Um, they won this game 4-1 against Sheffield United. They did go behind actually early on. It was McGoldrick who scored for Sheffield United for the third third goal of the season. But Chelsea's firepower really is too much for most teams, it seems. Uh, it was uh, Zajacek actually had a great game, had a hand in pretty much all the goals. Um, Terry Abraham equalised and Chilwell put top Chelsea ahead before half-time. And then in the second half, Thiago Silva headed his first goal for the club um, before Timo Werner continued his great recent run of form with another goal for Chelsea to seal a 4-1 victory and put them um, up into fifth place um, looking good for Chelsea at the moment unfortunately Of course Aston Villa 
their three 0 victory at the Emirates yesterday. I've already covered the game in a in a previous video, and then they are now up to sixth place, of course, following that victory. Um, very good performance from Aston Villa. They've won all three of their away games um, without even conceding a goal. So they're in great form. Um, it was great form that they they took into the game against us. I say whoever won that game would have gone sixth. It's them. They're in sixth place. We've dropped down to eleventh, and the less said about that, the better. Everton, of course, were the early leaders, um, won their first four games, but they're now on a bad run. This is their third defeat in a row against Manchester United. They did lead early on the goal from Bernard, his first goal of the season, but Man United had turned it around before half-time, two goals from Bruno Fernandes, and they then sealed the victory um, in the very last minute on a breakaway. Um, Edison Cavani scored his first goal for the club, being set up by Bruno Fernandes. So anyone who had him in their fantasy team this week would have done well for points. Um, unfortunately, I wasn't one of them. Crystal Palace, they're another team that's going well, aren't they? They enjoyed a good 4-1 victory over Leeds. They don't score a lot of goals usually, Crystal Palace. So this was a bit of a surprise. Um, they took the lead. It was a header from uh, from Scott Dan, gave them the lead. Um, Leeds actually had a goal disallowed by uh, Patrick Bamford. Very unfortunate, actually, because um, he looked clearly onside. Um, his arm was offside and they, they disallowed the goal. Um, in the end, Crystal Palace ran out easy winners. It was a Eze got their second goal, an own goal from Helder Costa and Ayu did score for Crystal Palace. Bamford did score one for Leeds that, that did stand. Um, but maybe that disallowed goal maybe had a big influence on the final result. But Leeds have lost again. They've lost 4-1 again. Who do they play next? Hmm. Probably be a nice easy game for them, won't it? <laughs> There was some drama at uh, late drama actually at the City of London Stadium as West Ham faced Fulham. It was quite a non-district game for most of the the, the uh, ninety minutes, but then in stoppage time, Suchek gave West Ham the lead. It looked as though that was going to be the winning goal, um, but it shouldn't have been. Um, Fulham got a penalty deep into stoppage time, ninety eighth minute, last kick of the game. It was a uh, Lookman who, who took it. He tried a Penenka, um, didn't get it right at all. It basically just chipped it into the arms of West Ham's goalkeeper Lucas Fabianski. Could be a crucial miss that for Fulham as they battle against relegation. Uh, really struggling they are. Uh, they could have got a point here. Maybe they should have got a point. But in the end, it finished West Ham 1, Fulham 0, uh, and Fulham remain in 17th place. Uh, West Ham actually are up to 12. Um, they're, doing, they're doing pretty well, aren't they? Um, certainly after the difficult start that they had. The final game of the weekend was at uh, as was down at Brighton, probably the least exciting game on paper, and that's how it proved to be. Brighton against Burnley, finishing a goalless draw, unsurprisingly. Burnley just can't score goals. They remain 19th place. Brighton are playing some good football, actually. They're just not getting the rewards they deserve. They can't score enough goals either. They are in, they're in 16th place. They're in a relegation battle, but probably play the best football out of all the teams in the bottom half of the league. Um, but this particular game, finishing a goalless draw, Brighton nil, Burnley nil. So that's that then, weekend eight of the Premier League. It seems to be starting to take a little bit more shape now, doesn't it? Um, Leicester doing really well, Southampton as well. Um, but Liverpool uh, are still in there, aren't they, in third place. Um, Chelsea as well are looking good. And we don't want to omit it, but Spurs as well are going well, aren't they? Um, but I'm sure, as we've said before, that won't last. To be honest with you, the rest of the league is, is unimportant at the moment for us with the problems that we've got. We really need to turn this around quickly. Um, but we'll see what happens. I mean, at the moment, it's not looking good, is it? We're down in 11th place. We're not scoring goals. Um, that was a terrible defeat against Aston Villa. Um, and we really, we now need things to change quite quickly. Thank God for the international break. Didn't think I'd ever be saying that, but I did. So there you go. Um, if you enjoyed this video, um, please give it a thumbs up. If you like my channel, like what I do, please subscribe down in the corner there, please, as well. That'd be really great. So if you've got any comments about the weekend action, weekend eight, do you think it is finally settling down a bit now, the Premier League? Um, and we're going to see the usual top four or do you think Leicester can maybe maintain their, their great start and put another league title challenge in Southampton are they outsiders for a place in Europe possibly Aston Villa as well they were impressive wasn't they this weekend um, so lots going on let me know what you think uh, so please stay tuned to the channel lots of good stuff coming up I'll be doing a live show a positive Arsenal podcast trying to put a positive spin on all the negativity that's going on around at the moment but I'm sure we'll get there in the end um, so I say thanks for watching thanks for supporting the channel and of course as always in the meantime come on you Gunners!